Yes, my name is Carolyn Cartling. I'm just appearing as an individual. Thank you. Yes, when you're ready. I'd like to talk to you about two topics this afternoon. Um, firstly, the damage that fracking would cause to the rich and complex and unique and very valuable ecosystems in the Northern Territory where it would be done. Aboriginal people make up a majority of the resident population in the shale gas basins in the Northern Territory and they're strongly opposed to fracking taking place on their land. The Beetaloo sub-basin is the largest of these and representatives of these people have raised serious objections to fracking. Their song lines are carried through both the underground and surface waterways of all this country and they're a crucial part of their culture. The whole region is a wetland and it has annual monsoonal flooding and pollution of this area that would be caused by flooding and leakage of water contaminated by the chemicals used in fracking would cause serious permanent damage. The water, soil and all the wildlife such as the hundreds of bird species that use places like Lake Woods for important breeding sites and migration stopovers would be destroyed. There are very many rare and threatened species of birds and animals in the Beetaloo sub-basin and important plants for the Aboriginal people. And it's also a very valuable reason for region for tourism in the Northern Territory and a lot of interest from international visitors. And something the Aboriginal people could be involved in. There'd be local long-term jobs and opportunities for Aboriginal people into the future and not just finishing when wells are decommissioned or abandoned. An industry for these people I'm also concerned about the abandoned wells and the impossibility of adequate long-lasting monitoring of them. The Victorian report into the inquiry into fracking mentions concerns raised by the New South Wales chief scientist and engineer, Professor Mary O'Kane, saying that active wells would be subject to monitoring programs, but there's very little research on well integrity on long-term abandoned wells. The Victorian report mentions the risks of fractures extending to connect with aquifers and contaminating water resources with methane and chemical compounds and spills when flow back to the surface occurs. I'll tell you the next bit in a minute. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, so the fracking inquiry and the Chief Minister, Michael Gunner, have to listen to these and all the other very great concerns raised by a majority of the Northern Territory population and ban fracking for the long-term safety of our unique and special environment and all Territorians into the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Um, I, I may just make just a quick comment, and I'm glad you raised uh, Professor Mary O'Kane, who's the Chief Giant Scientist of New South Wales um, report. Uh, they, uh, I can assure you, they have been looked at, and indeed they are referenced in the uh, draft final report that we, we handed down in December. She had much uh, valuable information contained in those reports. We've also looked at reports from Victoria um, and other jurisdictions around Australia and overseas, like the United Kingdom, Canada, various various provinces in Canada as well. Mm -hmm. About abandoned wells. Uh, yeah. um, amongst other things, amongst other things, yes. D Dr. Jones does have a question. Yes. I do. I, I heard you make mention. I'm not sure whether you're referring to the. the 
I'm not sure whether you're referring to the Beedaloo Basin specifically in this context, but you mentioned that um, it's an important region for tourism in the NT. Um, would you care to elaborate on that, in, in, particularly in the context of what you view the sustainable employment prospects might be? Because that's obviously a key socio-economic concern. Yes, well, if the, if the natural environment is preserved uh, and protected, there, there's a lot of interest, there's already a lot of interest from international visitors. Coming, coming to the Territory and, and to those areas, not just um, in, in Catherine, um, at um, Kakadu National Park, but other areas as well. Um, what do and you think of the, the, the attractions? Like, like, is it like woods or the Long Reach Lagoon and those places with lots of birds? Yes, yes, that, mm. that's, that's certainly a part of it. Mm. And, and there, there are unique animal, animal species that are threatened, many of them, through that area. Um, and, and just very, very special environment with the, with the wetlands and um, in dry season as well. Um, very special uh, sort of tourism where people might be going out camping perhaps, taken, you know, with Aboriginal guides and, and hearing about their knowledge, you know, their, their knowledge long term of, of that country and their stories. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their song lines and um, special, special, unique stories that the Aboriginal people have got. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, again, uh, thank you uh, very much for coming, uh, Ms. Cartling, today, giving up your time up and speaking to the inquiry. It's very much appreciated. If you were reading from a written document and you, and you want that written document to be a formal submission to the inquiry, uh, perhaps you could just leave a copy with one of the members of the task force just to one side there and we'll make sure that put, that's put up on the website. Yes, all right. Thank you. I've, I'm doing a submission as well, which, which I haven't um, forwarded yet. All right. Um, Yes. These are just brief notes, but okay. I could certainly type it up and, and it, bring it in later. If you're already doing a submission, that's fine. I would urge you um, to uh, get that submission in as soon as you possibly can. Yes, certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank All right. You.